Loin of venison, one of my favorite meats. Slightly gamey, absolutely delicious. It's packed with protein, low in cholesterol, and so it's like the Rolls Royce cut. It's phenomenal. I'm gonna cut it into four. Marinade, olive oil, salt, pepper. Thyme is a very sort of dainty, soft, sweet herb, and it goes brilliantly with the rich gaminess of the venison. Juniper berries. The flavor is almost like a sort of rich, bittersweet, slightly peppery flavor. Garlic. Get the back of your knife on it. Get the loin, place it on top. Olive oil. Season. Leave that to marinade, and that's ready for the pan. Cooking the venison, you've got to be a lot more delicate than you were if you were cooking a fillet of beef because it's very lean, hardly any fat on there. Hot pan, olive oil. Just keep on rolling it around. It should become nice and springy and slightly bouncy, and that indicates that it's slightly pink, but a little bit firm in the centre. Butter. Baste the venison, and then just take it out of the pan and just spoon it over there. Leave that to sit. Now, for the sauce, we're going to do a really nice sweet and sour pepper. Red and yellow pepper. Just stand the pepper up on its base and just cut round like we're segmenting an orange. And look, you've got the seeds there, fit to the bin. Olive oil in, peppers into the pan. A little bit of salt. And by having the skin on the peppers, it doesn't allow the peppers to become too soft and overcooked. It keeps them really nice and robust. Time. This is where it gets really exciting. White wine vinegar. It smells amazing, but it starts to glaze the peppers. A couple of tablespoons of water in there. You've got this really nice, sweet and sour, peppery vinegar at the bottom. Peppers out. Carved. Nice, thick slices. And look, the juice is coming out of the peppers. A little bit of salt, just glaze the venison with some extra virgin olive oil. And there, look. Venison with sweet and sour peppers, done. Ribeye. This is the new fillet. It's a chef's dream. It's got this wonderful casing of fat separating the chain and the ribeye. So as it cooks, this fat just imparts more and more flavor. It just melts in your mouth. Delicious. Wrap. Nice and tight. Set that in the fridge. And when I come to cut my portions, they're exact, they're the same size. And more importantly, I haven't wasted anything. Fridge. Artichokes. Look. They're nice and firm. They've got this really nice sort of celeriac stroke nutty flavour to them. This time of year, perfect. Yeah. Cut off the stalks. Remove leaves. You know when to stop, when you start seeing that really nice light coloured leaf inside. Take your knife and then just peel down through the stalk. Now, that's your artichoke prepped. Lemon. That stops them from oxidising, basically going brown. And just cut them in half. Look at that. That's the beautiful celebration of spring. Water, lemons, salt, white wine vinegar, pepper, olive oil. Watch. Let the knife do the work, and look at that. That is beautiful. Hot pan. Cooking the ribeye, you've got to be quick. Olive oil, salt, pepper. Get all that seasoning soaking up. Now look at that, beautiful. Garlic, crush, rosemary. Into the pan. That's the noise you want to hear, that sizzling. If you haven't got that, get it back out of the pan. Look at that colour there. Absolutely phenomenal. Butter. And this is where it starts to take the steak to a different level. This butter is really bringing out the texture and the flavour of the meat. Out onto a plate and just leave it to rest. Griddle. Olive oil. Take out your artichokes. Salt and pepper into the griddle pan. Perfect. Turn them over. Artichokes off. Carve. And that is a dream come true. Ribeye of beef, griddled artichokes, done. Halibut. Absolutely perfect this time of year. The season runs from April to November, and it's a great alternative to cod. It's very robust, but it's got this really nice snowflake appearance. It's bright white, full of flavor, and packed with protein. Skin. Hold it towards the tail, and just tug the tail. 
beautiful look. All you do now is just cut nice, big, thick slabs of halibut into the fridge to firm up. Now, we're going to make this really amazing fresh tandoori paste. Starting off with some ginger, garlic, cumin, coriander seeds, and the spices here. We've got chili, turmeric, paprika, and garam masala. Basically, a hot, warm spice. Roast seeds, salt. And that sort of intensifies the flavor. Take a small knob of ginger, anti roll Thompson size knob. Peel. Great. That ginger into the pestle and mortar. Three cloves of garlic. Toasted seeds in. Salt, spice, lemon. That starts to turn the paste into a really nice, sharp, vibrant, fresh flavor, which you never get when you buy a tandoori paste. Tomato puree. And then a couple of tablespoons of groundnut oil. Mix. The color is extraordinary. You don't get that color when you buy a paste. Done. Absolutely beautiful. Now, marinade in the halibut. Yogurt, paste, lemon, sugar. Just to sort of chill the flavor of the heat with all the spices. Mix. Look at that color now. Beautiful. Halibut. In it goes. Spoon the marinade over the halibut. Hot pan. Ground the oil. Straight into the pan. Leave that cooking nice and gently for about two and a half to three minutes each side. We're going to serve it on a bed of cucumber. Peel. Look, these wonderful strips, almost like pappardelle pasta. Beautiful. Cucumber into a bowl. Season. Mint. Chop. Yogurt. Lemon. Absolutely amazing. Cucumber in the center of the plate. Beautiful. Halibut. It's ready to come out and watch. Mmm, smells amazing. Tandoori spiced halibut with cucumber aita. Done. Caramelized apples and pears are perfect dessert for this time of year. This is a Braeburn apple, nice and crisp, full of juice, hardly any acidity. This is a commis pear, now quite robust, quite dense in the center, but the most amazing flavor. Very, very sweet. Right, when we caramelize fruit, you've got to core the center. Down, in, twist, and pull out. Nice thin slices as you peel. The secret behind roasting apples and pears is making sure that they're not too ripe. If they're slightly too ripe, then the whole thing disintegrates in the pan. Look at that, it smells amazing. And now, we're going to form a really nice caramel, but we're going to season this can with black pepper, star anise, and cloves. And that gives a really nice spice flavor when you're caramelizing the apples and pears. Pan, sugar. Get it really nice and even. Therefore, the caramel starts cooking evenly and doesn't burn in the corners. Butter. That stops it from separating and splitting. Spice. Cinnamon stick, pears, and apples in. Put the fat side down. And now that I'm happy with that color, I'm going to add my Calvados. And it sort of enriches the caramel. Oh, Jesus. Then finish with apple juice. It just sort of liquefies the caramel and just takes the, the heaviness out of it. Bring that to the boil and just coat the apples and pears. And let it glaze over and serve. That smells amazing. And now, just finish that with some ice cream on. Caramelized apples and pears with ice cream. Done. It's got a Beville Caponata. It's delicious, it's very lean, it's good for you, and it's a great alternative to beef. Now, Caponata. Basically, it's like a ratatouille, but without all the tomato puree, so you can identify exactly what's in it. Chop, peppers, celery, onions, aubergines. Now, it's really important to have something like an aubergine inside a caponata. It gives it that sort of bitter, sweet flavor. Hot pan, olive oil. Season. Red wine vinegar, and that sort of wakes everything up. Tomato, basil, olives, capers. Lovely, smells amazing. Out onto a plate, and that stops it from overcooking and turning mush. Wow. Let's go to Now, 
We're going to panne it. Basically, that means flour, egg wash, and breadcrumb. Three very simple stages. A couple of tablespoons of flour, eggs, breadcrumbs, parmesan. But these will take it to a different dimension. A nice, heavy coating of breadcrumbs and parmesan cheese prevents the veal from drying out. And now, she's ready for the pan. Okay. Olive oil just, just starts to smoke. In she goes. I love that sound. If it goes into a cold pan with olive oil, you've got the escallop greasy. We only turn it once. It can rip or tear quite easily. Check the colour. Wow. Now, this is where it gets really exciting. Pine nuts, capers, butter. And that helps to toast the pine nuts, fry off the capers, and really give the most amazing flavour. Lovely. Basil. Just the heat out of the butter will start to cook the basil. Caponata, be generous with it. Wow. And then with the veal, up and on. Summer's here. Veal escallop with caponata. Done. Pork chop, very nutritious, low in calories, very versatile. I'm going to roast it with sage, finish it with some Braben apple and radicchio. Perfect combination. This thick line of fat around the back. The most important thing now is just cutting through it, and it stops the pork chop from curling up. Season. Hot pan. Olive oil. It's really important to get the chop and roll it down the back of the pan. Get the outside layer of fat nice and crispy. Garlic. Butter. Base. Sage. Sage gets nice and crispy. Drain. Masala. That's going to glaze the pork chop. Just leave that to rest. Because pork is a very dense meat, we're going to serve Braben apple with radicchio. Chop. Leaving the skin on, protects the apple, and it doesn't disintegrate when it hits the pan. Radicchio. Olive oil. Apples in. Season. Time. And then, finally, the radicchio salad in there. Cider vinegar. And then just finish it off with a tablespoon of olive oil and make this wonderful, warm, sautéed salad with a cider vinegar inside. Take your pork, run it through its juices, and then just sit that beautiful chop on there and just cut that with a touch of olive oil. That is delicious. Who said pork boy? Pan roasted pork chop with radicchio, braben apples. Done. Pan roasted skate ring. Delicious, very, very sweet, easy to get hold of, and more importantly, very cheap. Pat dry, season, hot pan, olive oil. Butter. Now the fish is taking on a completely different colour. Based. And that butter is on the verge of becoming a benoisette, a nut brown butter. Beautiful. Slides off. Put it back. Leave that to rest for two minutes. Now the garnish. Lettuce. Salt. Pepper. Balsamic vinegar. Olive oil. Rosemary. 30 seconds. Hot pan. Beetroot. And look at the glaze on that beetroot now. Capers. Parmesan. Parsley. Vinaigrette. As the parmesan starts to melt, take it off. Literally 10 seconds in the pan. Out. And wow. That beats spinach any day. And that has to be the perfect way of bringing escape back to life.
Pan roasted skate with beetroot and parmesan. Done. Duck, normally burnt to a cinder or stuffed inside a pancake roll. What a waste. It's nice and light and gamey, absolutely delicious. Score, season, five spice. Quite generous with the five spice. This makes the duck really aromatic. Dry pan, fat side down, push it down in the pan. As that fat starts releasing itself from the duck breast, get a pan. Now, save that fat. That's duck fat. Delicious for sautéed potatoes. Honey. Soy sauce. For me, the most important thing now is the duck stays nice and pink. Absolutely stunning. Green beans. Perfect accompaniment with duck. Into boiling water, literally one and a half minutes. Hazelnuts. These are dried, roasted hazelnuts. More intense flavour. Season, crush. Beans, nice and crunchy. When the beans are warm, they take on the vinaigrette. Olive oil, hazelnut oil, sherry vinegar. Delicious. Slice. Lovely. Honey roast up with hazelnut green bean salad. Done. Fucking delicious. Leg of lamb, the king of all joints. Sweet, tender, very rich, and absolutely delicious. A must have for every dining table. Get your butcher to bone it out and butterfly it, basically, so you can tie it and roast it. Hot oven, season, olive oil, mint. Use it in abundance. It's fresh, it's fragrant. Smells amazing. Goat cheese. The mint perfumes the inside of the lamb, and the goat cheese just sort of makes the center nice and creamy. Garlic. Roll. First of all, a big loop around the lamb. That keeps it all in shape. Get a nice length of string, tie a knot right at the very top underneath, and leave it coming out here. The secret of tying it this shape helps to cook it evenly and look beautiful. Rosemary. Season. Gets the skin really nice and crispy. Olive oil. Stops the string from burning, so therefore it won't burst open when it's in the oven. And bingo. Roast. 35 minutes. Rest. Carb. Mint vinaigrette. That has confirmed it's definitely the king of roast. Roast leg of lamb with goat cheese and mint. Done.